words of power because we are kings and our words matter. Having dreams that God gives you, visions that God gives you, and being infused with God's purposes and plans, and being connected to God, and being guided by God, led by God, and being filled with purposes in your mind, and ambition, and desires that are holy and from God. If you're filled with that, I'll tell you, then you will like it. Please turn with me to Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 and we will begin there. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The entrance to the kingdom is narrow, straight and narrow gate. That's what Jesus talked about. It's pretty narrow as you enter because there's not so many ways. Jesus is the only way. That's why it's narrow. You got to believe that. In that way, maybe you can say everything is narrow about Christianity. But once you enter the kingdom, then it's very wide. It's very huge inside. So you should not think that the whole thing is a narrow thing, you know. It is not a narrow thinking uh, religion or way of life or anything like that. The entrance is narrow because you believe this one thing very strongly that Jesus is Lord and there is only one Savior, that is Jesus. But once you enter in, there's scope for all kinds of things. There's possibilities and scope is huge uh, once you enter the kingdom. So the mentality has to change to comprehend all these things, to understand and to walk in all the privileges and the blessings of the kingdom. How can you uh, sum up the kingdom? Jesus said, pray in this manner. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So I would say to you, the kingdom of God. When a person has entered into the kingdom of God or when the kingdom comes into a person, 
what happens the will of god is done on earth in this person's life as it is done in heaven heaven's will is done on this earth i would say heaven invades his life literally and uh, this is a tremendous concept that's why jesus the bible says preached the kingdom of god didn't preach what people call gospel these days you know just the forgiveness of sins and when you get die you'll go to heaven the bible specifically says the brand of gospel that jesus preached it says he preached the gospel of the kingdom it means it's a lot more than just forgiveness of sins there's a whole lot included in it that is the will of god done in that person's life so that the person's life becomes like heaven and his life is impacted and changed so radically and so t- totally that's what the kingdom of god is all about that's why jesus came not just to forgive our sins and take us to heaven but to change us totally and radically and make a difference and make an impact in this world through us and so that there may be glory to god in this earth through what he does in in his redemption in and through us uh, we need to keep that in mind so the kingdom you can say in essence is the will of god being done here on earth in people's lives as the kingdom comes in now today i want to uh, we've been looking at last few weeks we've been looking at the word of god and seeing how the word of god is the thing that god uses to transform our minds romans 12:2 says that you need to be transformed in your mind so that you may prove the will of god since will of god the kingdom of god is about the will of god being done in your life If you really want to prove the perfect will of God in your life and live out God's perfect will then you need to be transformed by the renewing of your mind because without being transformed in the mind you will never be able to even understand or to do the will of God so that's why the renewing of the mind is so necessary because unless and otherwise you uh, the will uh, i mean uh, the uh, the mind is transformed you cannot uh, Uh, really uh, do the perfect will of god that's how the bible puts it so transform transformation of our mind is very important we've been talking about that and the word of god is the thing that comes in and transforms our mind and our thinking now today i want you want to take you a little further to show you how this whole process works how this transformation works how it leads to the accomplishment of god's will in our life what this process really is all about how it really works we're going to talk a lot about the mind today why god has given us the mind when what the mind does and what it is expected to do the first thing i want to deal with is a lot of people think or see themselves as remote control beings totally under the direction of a god who sits in heaven and works the master controls from there so we don't think we don't uh, have any desires we don't uh, exercise our will in fact you should not exercise your will you think you know we just be there and uh, you shouldn't have any desires you shouldn't have any ambitions you shouldn't seek you shouldn't uh, go after anything you shouldn't do anything you just be there and uh, you are under remote control remotely from there he is controlling so whatever channel he plays that's what will play out in you know? a uh, there's not much that you can do uh, as a christian you kind of become a mental blank people think you know you draw a blank mentally and uh, become kind of inactive mentally uh, if you can say that uh, uh, so that uh, you know you're just free to just uh, for god to just do his will through you uh you know uh, in and through you by remote control now that is a totally wrong concept totally against what the scripture teaches uh actually the scripture teaches exactly the opposite uh, the t- scripture teaches that god treats us very much on par with himself he has made us like himself and treats us as comrades literally treat it actually the word friends are used in the bible we sing the song i am a friend of god right uh the bible talks about it how abraham was the friend of god and jesus himself said uh, towards the end of his life to the disciples uh, you are not my servants but you are my friends that's why i reveal everything to you he said so god treats us as friends god treats us as equal 
because he's made us in his, in his image and likeness. He knows that we are the highest of creation. Eh? There's nothing above us except God. You know, we are created with such honor and glory. So he doesn't want us to be dummies. He doesn't want us to be robots. He wants us to be some, uh, does not want us to be some kind of a, um, uh, some, some mechanized, uh, uh, you know, machine, you know. Uh, that just works by remote control. That's not the idea that God uh, conveys through the Bible. The Bible conveys this idea that man is a very intelligent being. He's just like God. He can think. He can analyze. He can decide. He can determine. He can will. He can want. He can desire. All these capacities didn't come to him as an aberration. It came to him because God gave it to him. These are not things that came to him as a result of sin. By sin, it became... It turned into something uh, of an instrument of evil uh, to accomplish evil. The mind turned into an instrument to, to accomplish evil after the fall. But the mind itself was given by God. The ability to desire was given by God. The ability to will was desired, uh, given by God. The ability to have an ambition in life was given by God. The ability to think deeply and analyze and come to conclusions and decisions and to focus and to pursue something in your life. All these things, the abilities are very important. It's given to you by God so that you can do, you can, you can, so that you can um, accomplish that mandate that he originally gave. What was the mandate about? Be fruitful, multiply, replenish. That is common to both animals, fish, birds, and man. The last two is specific to man. What is that? To subdue and to dominate. For that particular uh, aspect, God gave man this ability, the mind. Mind of man is very much, very unlike the mind of animals and other creatures. Man can uh, contemplate. Man can think about himself and his likes and wants and he can have ambition, he can analyze, he can think very deeply, he can have profound thoughts. In that way, man is very different from animals. God created him like that. Uh, he created him like that so that using that ability, that ability to desire, will, determine, think, and so on, using those abilities, he can rule and dominate. He can rule and dominate because he's got this ability that others don't have. All right? That's the purpose of God. So it is wrong to think that God made us like machines and that he controls us by, from, uh, by remote control, you know, sitting in heaven. <laughs> And, and the Bible puts it this way. Let me read to you a verse in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 1. I'm reading from New King James Version. It says, We then as workers together with him, King James I think will have it as co-laborers with him. So it says, We then as co-laborers together with him also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. Look at how God addresses us. He's talking about, Paul is talking about what he is in this world. He says, I'm a co-laborer. We're co-laborers. With who? Not just with one another. We're co-laborers with, with God himself. We're co-laborers with him, he says. That this means that apart from Christ, we can do nothing. But in the same way, apart from him, you know, God's work on this earth is not complete also. We need God. And God expects us to fulfill our part because in order for him, his work to be done on this earth, it can never be complete without us. So our cooperation is needed. God uses us to do his work here on this earth. So God looks to you and I as contributors to what he is doing. Not just robots carrying out his ideas, but we contribute something. We are here, we are contributing something. You know, this is an honor that God gives us. God doesn't say, you be a dummy and I'll just use you, you know, uh, control you by remote and, and carry out some things through you. You just be like a machine there. No, God wants us to think. God wants us to desire. God wants us to will. These are the aspects of the mind that I want to pay some attention to, the to this week and, and the next coming weeks because these are very important to understand from the Bible why this has been given and how it must be used. So, God is actually interested in our dreams, in our visions, in our desires. 
So Bible talks about, for example, you know, on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was poured out, the Bible says, the young men will see visions and the old men will see dreams. So if you have a dream, do you have a dream? <laughs> do you have a vision? See, this is the problem with a lot of Christians. There's a lot of Christians that I know don't believe in having a dream or vision. They think that's very worldly. You have a dream for your life. What are you talking about? That's not what Christianity is about. Christianity is about getting saved, having your sins forgiven, going to heaven one day. What about this dream business? This is not Christianity. You know, this is Sam Chaladar is teaching something other than. No. When, the whole, when man is saved, on the day of Pentecost, Holy Spirit was poured out upon the people that have been saved. When the Holy Spirit was poured out, God was bringing man back to what he originally was meant to be. That is to dream dreams. And to have visions. God wants you to have dreams. God wants you to have visions. God has made you for that. Only if you can dream dreams, then God's dreams can be accomplished on this earth. You got to dream with him. You got to be able to dream his dreams. You got to have his visions. Then only you can accomplish something on this earth. So you are made for dreams. You are made for visions. You know. Now... Some young people say, well, brother, I'm too young. I'm just only 14, 15 years old. You want me to have a vision? What kind of vision? I just want to play cricket and watch cricket. I just want to have fun watching TV and go to the movies and do all that. What are you talking about vision? I don't want any vision. Why is the Bible talking about young men having vision? See, that's the problem, you know. You see young people having problems. You see young people not interested in life, not interested in studies, not just wasting their time running around here and there hanging around with the wrong crowd, wasting their uh, everything, their life and their years go by. You know what the problem is? I know because I've been there. The key is vision. When they don't have a vision, they sleep and sleep and sleep. When they don't have a vision, they don't study. When they don't have a vision, they just hang out with the wrong crowd. When they don't have a vision, they just do things that they should not be doing. Why? They don't have a vision. You know, I've been through the whole route there, you know. When you get a vision, everything seems to change. You're excited about getting up. You're excited about going. You're ex excited about doing. You're excited about studying, you know. I often think, you know, if I just studied in the days when I studied, you know, back in college, you know, Recently, I went back to the college where I studied and, and spoke there, you know. I hardly studied. <laughs> just the travel there and back is the big uh, thing, you know, for us, you know. Just the traveling there and having fun and just going there and having, going to the canteen, having the puri and, and all that. And then attending a few classes, then having the wonderful lunch they give. And, and then after that, you know hanging around a little bit more and then getting back on the train again, back to, you know, with a whole group of people and just nothing to do, just killing time, we call it, you know, killing time. You know, I often think about now, you know, I study, sometimes I sit down and study for hours and hours and I it just never gets through. And uh, I think, my God, how well I would have done if I just studied like that then. Why didn't I study like that? Then I'm, now I'm studying like I'm studying for an exam, you know. <laughs> what are you studying for, people ask me. It looks like an exam every Sunday for me, you know. But the thing is this. Vision has come. When vision come, your whole attitude towards things change. You have an ambition in your heart. You're aiming for something. You're going after something. There is a desire there is a holy desire that occupies you and fills you. There is something that's propelling you, pushing you forward to do certain things. Get up and go and, and really work hard and so on. So what I'm saying is, visions are a very important aspect of human life and your mind is given for visions. Why did God give you the ability to dream visions, uh, have visions? Because if you don't like the way your life is, you can change your life by having the visions. Bible is given to you, the word of God is given to you to cause you to have vision. When you encounter God in the word of God, it will cause you, it will give you vision for life. 
it will make you see different uh, see yourself differently make you to see god differently the world differently and make you to see your destiny and eternity everything differently therefore you get a vision by reading the word of god so you're not too young to have vision it's good to have vision when you're young because it will order your life and it will don't worry it will not take away fun the other way is the harder way to live live with that vision see how hard it is it's very hard when you're 25 years old don't even know what you want to do it's very hard when you're 40 years old and you don't know why you are born for what you need to do and where you need to go what you need to study what you need to work on it's very hard life my friend i don't want to live that hard life it's very easy but as a very young person that's why the bible says remember your creator in the days of your youth i'm telling young boys and girls here when you're young remember your creator your god because he is able to guide you into the destiny that he has for you he will take you to where you need to go what you need to study what you need to do and so on so that when you are 25 30 35 years old you won't be just drawing a blank in your mind you know not knowing what to do you'll be already set and ready to go because you know exactly what's happening in your life you're filled with a vision so i would it's young people think christian life is a hard life oh, i just want to wait brother just have fun you know and then later on when i get old i'll get become a christian you know well they think christian life is hard i'm telling you my friend that life is very hard this life is a lot of fun <laughs> it gives you a lot of peace a lot of enjoyment this is fun really this is fun because once you're on the road you know where you're going then i tell you that's fun to live your life all the fun is here in knowing god and being guided by god and knowing your destiny and knowing where you're going that's that's what it's all about so dreams and visions god has given to you to guide your life towards the destiny that he has for you to take you to the destination that he has planned and purpose for you paul knows that you know paul says i i you know when i was in my mother's womb god separated me for the gospel he realized later on you know he got saved much later but he realizes looking back that while he was in his mother's womb god separated him when he was born god was with him when he was raised god guided his path his paths were prescribed for him map was drawn out for him he took him through that path gave him the training that he needs to have and the kind of upbringing and the background and the and the information and the experiences that he gleaned from all the years of his life even before his salvation were all preplanned by god and god took him through that path to bring him to where he was so that he can do what he is doing today that's why he says we are co-laborers with him you know because he sees himself in god's plan and purposes and god respects us god doesn't want us to be dummies so that he does everything god wants us to think god wants us to wish god wants us to have visions and dreams and desires and and make decisions so that he can do his thing through us similarly old people you know the the older people they say well brother i'm about 70 years old what are you talking about dreaming now <laughs> well it's never too late my friend dream now young men shall see visions and old men shall, shall dream dreams dreams are something that men are made for dreams men and women are made to dream if you don't have a dream that's very sad today if you don't have a dream in your heart if you don't uh, if you're not filled with a vision and a dream that's a very sad thing as a human being i think it's it's very unfortunate that people live a routine life they get up in the morning you know clean up eat their food go to work and uh, they don't know why they are at work so they don't do the work properly also and then when it's over by 5 o'clock it's over for 4:30 they start packing packing is the happiest thing of the day you know day's work eh? and uh, and then they leave for home come back and watch some tv eat some food go back to bed and then get up in the morning they don't know why they got up why they have to go back to work you know this is the uh, this is this is the routine they go through why because they just don't have a vision and a dream 
and uh, sometimes they don't like the way it is but they don't want they don't know how to change it they don't know why god has given the mind the mind has been given to you as an instrument of change if you don't like it i'll tell you you can change it if you don't like the way your life is you can change it by thinking different thoughts having dreams that god gives you visions that god gives you and being infused with god's purposes and plans and being connected to god and being guided by god led by god and being filled with purposes in your mind and ambition and desires that are holy and from god if you're filled with that i'll tell you then you will like it Jesus name.